Remember when I said, I was one with the universe, strike the quotes, well, I recently endured a lofty film venture. Before principal photography I looked at the sky, it was space after all, and I asked God, and yes, I indeed not capitalize the GL principle. Anyway, any sort of God, not the God, but some greater knowledge. And I asked, show me a falling star. Under the influence of silver villains, this island rich with architecture, history, and uniquely metamorphic celestial blankets, somewhere between the systematic genocide of the native inhabitants of at least three continents and a football program worth more than the gross domestic product of these combined three, has lost its zest, lost its aim, and indeed lost the reputation that once made it a respectable imperial plague. Now with 375,000 Asian Americans, and how does that even make sense, Asian Americans? as if the melting pot that is America needs to remind all of its non-indigenous peoples about their own ethnicity's displeasures with their respective homelands. I, we, come to enjoy, appreciate, and educate ourselves with the very descendants who have distant relatives on every continent because of the selfish, pompous, gentlemanly, gracious individuals who decided a man with dark skin is not a man, but a beast. And we who want nothing more than to stimulate and surprise our minds constantly with priceless information, visions, and experience, wonder how a $5,000 deposit could be worth no more than a stuffy dorm room, television episodes we've seen before, and a prison-like class experience with no relief of Mother Nature beneath our bare feet. Dry, sarcastic, patronizing humor, no doubt in place to remind us that proper table manners are worth more than a lifetime of insight, knowledge, and experience friendly personality, or even an off-color joke, to make it all within earshot forget their many stresses and worries with a healthy laugh. Here and now, when and where, there is no escape, no relief from the constant burning CCTV eyes of a society that no longer trusts itself, does not respect even itself, and is still poisoned with complacent bigotry, racism, and perceived false illustriousness, we are reminded intensely and viciously that history indeed is written by winners. Brash, outrageous, and free. I am stunned by seeing. Seeing the skies, trees, ponds, hills, people, cars, signs, and roads. I can finally see. Not just individual things separately, but the whole world. Just seeing and comprehending. Looking in the sky, I do not just see a cloud, but millions of clouds, and the invisible wind that drives their motion. What to make of it? Blue and white of the sky are not just colors on my palette, but opportunities to express my self-conscious, to elaborate, to realize, to communicate, to see who I am and the way I see the world. Open your eyes. Stare at the attached shadows on your face. Listen to the insignificant sounds around you. Understand the beauty that surrounds us. Feel it, believe it, see it. I received nothing. I wrote it off. Kelly said, you can't just ask for a star. And I wrote it off. Understanding the vast size and scale of the universe. I saw a man scratch his testicles on the underground the other day. He was a portly man with a wax-shined head reading a copy of The Londoner. This was not a minor itch, more like a full-on adjustment. This is a man who either had considerable moisture issues or simply had a story he wanted to share with his fellow man. A story about his balls. I don't think I'm capable of being that open with my own countrymen. How can I when I'm a foreigner? I've decided that this is the greatest asset of the British people. They have an inherent comfort with each other that goes above all differences, aside from the almighty difference of class. Should a black Jew wearing a Free Ireland t-shirt and a conservative teenage neo-Nazi meet in Essex, then there will most likely be pints all around. But if that same Hitler youth had a pair of Ted Baker shoes on, well, then that's just crossing a line. This trait's aided by the fact that the entire British Empire was built while maintaining a steady buzz. I love seeing children in bars. There they are, 11 in the morning, being served kids' meals from 75-year-old men with shrapnel scars and tattoos of topless women. I can't venture a guess if their marbly eyes are the product of simple sleep deprivation 
or secondhand intoxication from the breath of their loved ones. I unconsciously scratched my ass in the middle of a Macy's once a few months ago. It was an honest oversight on my part. It was late and I was maintaining a steady stream of shopping anxiety sweat, and it just started to itch. From behind, I heard a loud scoff directed at me from a middle-aged woman in a mayoral candidate's pantsuit. I was immediately wrapped in a feeling of embarrassment and anxiety that can only be described as sitcom ready. I felt ostracized. I felt like those people. Looking back on it now, all I can do is think of that bald, fat man sipping an ale, applying a liberal layer of gold bond, and enjoying the freedom of pretending. Right, right. Back to it. So recently, I have become one with the universe. We are one and we are nothing. Anyway, tonight I smoked out of an apple with Jimmy Jill, Andrew, and Kelsey. Cutting a long story short, they all went to their respected places. Jimmy to talk on her computer, Andrew and Kelsey to fuck, but I stayed on my eggy wagging own. I sat on a stoop and then walked forward. Let me preface this by saying that Cambridge has serious image issues. We dare not, my brothers, step foot on the grass for fear of getting shot down in the alley alley. But tonight, I stepped. Oh my brothers, I dared. I stood up and looked up at the Cambridge sky, expecting nothing. Expecting nothing of the same sky I searched before my lofty film venture, it was space after all. Instantly, and unintentionally, space sang out. It sang out loud. A star, 